What's up, Kidata friends? It's Yanis here, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna go over the top nine things you should know when it comes to using Power BI. And this is a beginner's level video. The first thing you should know is how to load data into Power BI. Now, if you open a new blank Power BI file, you're gonna see this, and then if you click over Get Data, you're gonna see all these options over here. Power BI supports a lot of different data sources. There's even more down here. So whether your data is on Azure or on Google or on Amazon or in an SQL server or in Excel files, wherever it is, Power BI can create a connection and load the data into Power BI. For our use case, we're gonna use an Excel workbook to showcase how you can load it in. So if we click connect and then we click over here, all files, because I need a CSV file, click on the YouTube card main, click open. Then we see this, which is basically a snip of our data, the first 200 rows, just to make sure it's correct. Click load over here. And under data now, we're gonna have a new table. You can see it's creating it in the data model. And there you go, we have our table in. The next thing you should know is how to use Power Query Editor in order to edit your raw data. To do this, we can right click over here and click on Edit Query. And this is going to open the Power Query Editor. Over here, we see our raw data. And at the top, we see all the possible transformations we can do. As you can see, we can do things like add columns, remove columns, change data types, group the data by, merge the data, append the data, over into transform, we can do things like filling missing values or existing values, replace values, pivot and unpivot our data, create lists. We can also run R or Python scripts, or we can do whatever transformation you want in Power Query Editor. However, my suggestion is that we apply all these transformations in SQL or Python, let's say, and then you just bring your clean raw data into Power BI so you can start building your visuals. However, if you want to apply transformations, it's also available in Power Query Editor. In our case, we're just gonna showcase how, let's say we can delete this column, right click, remove column. There you go, you can see it added the step. Maybe you can change the year to be uh, a text and not a number. Uh, over here, we can do a text so it does not aggregate some of the year, for example. And then we can make sure that retail price and invoice price, both of them are uh, decimal numbers. And then you can see we get an error over here because we have the dollar sign. So what we can do now, you can see the step over here. We can remove this step and you can see it came back correct. And I'm just going to select retail price now and change this to a decimal number. The next thing we want to do now is click close and apply. And this is going to apply all the formatting we have just applied in our raw data. The next thing you should know is how to join your data together. So if you click over here in model view, this is where you can create your data model, which means that you can bring multiple different data sources together and then join them together. However, in our case, we only have one table over here, which is the table we have just loaded before. So I am going to load another table to showcase the joins. So I'm going to click uh, over here, uh, click all files, and then I'm going to select the car info table. This is the first 200 rows. I'm going to click load, and this should appear over here. There you go. As you can see, Power BI itself identified the join column, so the key column. However, I'm going to delete it so I can showcase it again. So as you can see, we have these two tables, these two tables over here and their columns. If I want to visualize them, I can go over in table view and I can click over them so I can visualize them. As you can see, both of them have index column, which is basically our key column we're going to use to join them together. So if I go back into model view, I can drag index from this table into the index of the other table, as you can see like this. And this is saying I'm going to create a new relationship. From table car main, I'm going to select column index. To table car info, column index. This is a one-to-one -one relationship and the cross filter direction is set to both. So I can filter from both tables. 
And then if I click save, this creates our connection, which is basically joining the two together. So I can use columns from both tables in the same visuals or aggregations. The next thing you should know is how to format your report view over here. So if you click over here where it says format your report page, and if we go over the canvas settings, for example, this is an important one. We can change the type into custom, and then we can change the height and the width. So we can have a longer or a wider report. Another important thing is the background, which I always change. So maybe this light gray over here and then set transparency to zero and you can see this is a light gray. Another important thing you should know before we start creating our visuals is how to create this text box over here because these are going to be the boxes that you have your titles, for example, or your section separations. The next thing you should know is how to create your visuals over here. Now there's two ways of creating them. You either create the visual first by clicking on it, and then you drag the fields you want into your visuals. So for example, I want to visualize retail price. I can just drag it uh, by make. So I can just drag make over here and you can see we have the retail price by make. Another way of creating the same visual is by clicking on make, for example, and you can see this created a table itself. Then we can click on retail price and it added the retail price on the table if I move it over here. And now I can just change the type of the visual into this one. And you can see it's the same visual, but I've done it using a different method. Now I don't follow a specific method. Sometimes I just drag from here into the visual. Sometimes I create the visual and then I drag the fields I need in the visual. What I suggest you should do is that you should go over all the visuals so you can visualize how data looks. For example, this is a line graph. You can get pie charts like this. You can get, uh, let's say, slicers. You can get tables. You can get pivot tables, cards, which is an important one. Yeah, my suggestion is that you click over all the possible visuals so you can see what's possible and then you choose from there. However, if I open one of my reports and show you the most used visuals, this is the report. Uh, cards are very commonly used, bar graphs are very widely used. Again, bar graphs, pie charts, maybe the maps, the tables you can see over here, and also the filters and then the date filter. These, I would say, are the most commonly used visuals. By the way, click the like button and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be showcasing in my next few videos how to build this dashboard from scratch. Right, after you create your visuals, you want to know how to format your visuals and different visuals have different formatting options. So you're going to have to go through them visual by visual. But for example, in this bar graph we have over here, if I click into format your visual, and I start with the y-axis, we can see that we can add or remove the values. We can add or remove the title or change the title. Uh, what's important, change the coloring, for example, into, let's say, this color over here. We can add a border. We can also add the data labels down here. I don't know if you can see them because I think I'm on the way, so I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller. Uh, and then like this, so now maybe it's visual. Add the, where is it, the data labels uh click on you can see we have the numbers we can change the color of the data labels to let's say this color over here we can make it bold we can change the size and then we can also go over into general and then add some effects on our visual so we can add the shadow as you can see we have some sharp edges now and then we can also edit the title so change our title move the title to the middle make it bold and make the font higher let's say up up like this right so my suggestion again for the visuals is that you should create your visuals and then go over all the possible options especially tables they have a lot of options in terms of visuals because you can actually conditionally format the column and it's actually very good like this so my suggestion is that you click on all your visuals and you go through the formatting over here and you play with it so you learn how to format your visuals. Right, the next thing you should know is how to create new columns or new measures. To do this, we're gonna go over into table view. We are gonna select the YouTube car info table and we want to extract, let's say, the horsepower number from this horsepower column. 
To do this, we need to right click on our table, create a new column. You can see we have the new column. We're gonna name this new column as uh, horse power NO, which is the number, equals, we are gonna use the left of the horsepower column. So uh, horsepower over here, comma three, click enter. As you can see, we have the number now. However, this is still a text. So we have to do value. So this is gonna be a number now. Uh, and then close it. We get an error. The error says we cannot convert the value codes of type text to type number. So we can add an if error over here. And then the if error is going to be zero. If it's an error, click enter. And now we have a value. So this is now a new column that has the number from horsepower text. The next thing we want to do now is to create a measure that's going to have a calculation from both tables. So let's say we want to have the retail price, which is a number, this price over here, divided by the horsepower number so we get the retail price per horsepower. To do this, we are going to select the main table, right click new measure. The new measure is going to be called retail price per horsepower, uh, horsepower NO equals, and then the calculation is going to be the sum of retail price divided by the sum of horsepower and all and then close this click enter and this is going to be our new measure so if we test this new measure now going back into our report view we are going to create a new visual so i'm just going to copy this paste it like this down here below and then i am going to add let's say the models into my y-axis and then into my x-axis i'm going to add my new measure there you go. So now we have the retail price per horsepower NO. Now I can actually click on this, make it a currency. So it's a value and then do zero over here. So we have the dollar values like this. Right. The next thing you should know is how to publish your report into your workspace. To do this, we can click on publish, but first we have to save the file. So we're going to do file, uh, save as and then select where we want to save our file. I am going to save it into uh, over here and then name this as Power BI Tutorial for Beginners V3 maybe, V3, click save. And now I can publish my file. I can click on publish and over here, we're going to have the list of all the workspaces you have access. And what you want to do is to select the workspace you have created specifically for this project. So over here, I have two test workspaces. I'm going to select this one over here, click select, and this is going to publish our report into our workspace. There you go. Now, the last thing you should know is how to manage this workspace. So how to push this new report you've created into an app. So if I click on it quickly, this is the report we have pushed into the workspace. And then if I go over here back into my workspace, I can see that I have three reports in my workspace and three data sets. Now, what you want to do is to put this new report we have just created, the version three, into our app. To do this, I can click over here, update the app, and into content, I'm gonna add new content and I'm gonna add my V3. So you can see this is the V3. So I'm gonna select this one and remove the V2. This is the V2. So click add. And if I click on it over here, I get a snip of my report. And then in the audience is where you want to add all the emails of the people that are going to have access into this app. After you add all the emails that need access into this app, you can click on update app. However, it doesn't let us because we need to make it visible. As you can see, it's not visible. Now it's visible. Now I can click on update and this is going to generate a link. So this is the link I can now copy and send it over to my stakeholders so they can click on it, access our report and get their insights. Right. So these are the top nine things you should know when it comes to Power BI. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, then please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos.